Hello everyone. I welcome you all to the first session of Lotto Festival's Introduction to Dart, which is being in, held in um, collaboration with ACM and ACMW. I welcome you all. So, uh, Lotto Festival uh, will be aiming to make you all familiar with. Uh, Dart and Flutter and built various applications in it. So the first event is uh, introduction to Dart. Let's start it. So uh, I'll start off by introducing what is Dart. So Dart is a very fast and client optimized language, which is used to uh, develop class cross platform apps. It is an open source language which was originally developed by Google. So it is well versed with uh, well versed and meant for both service side as well as user side uh, developers. And now it comes with some. It comes with a package called Dart SDK, which in turn, which in turn has a compiler, which helps uh, Dart run on those websites where uh, which don't support Dart. So a little about Dart is that it is an object oriented language and it is very similar to Java programming. So that's why it is very extensively used in making single page websites and web applications. So one of the uh, most famous example is uh, Gmail, which is being um, which was built using Dart. So another thing about Dart is that it's also very flexible. So it allows you to do like dyna dynamic checking during the runtime. So which is the which can be very useful during experimentation of various uh, applications. So Dart looks a bit like C and is an ob object uh, oriented programming language. So if you prefer working with languages like C or Java, so Dart is the one for you and you will be you will likely most likely enjoy it. And as mentioned, uh, a few applications of Dart are mobile app development and uh, it is also used in smart displays. And it when Dart is used in web applications, it is transpired to JavaScript. Uh, which which with the help of uh, uh, Dart SDK. So when it is transpiled to JavaScript, that time it lets it run on all the web browsers. So now many websites are using Angular Dart, and one of the some of the famous ones are uh, at Google are like AdSense and AdWords. So these are uh, built using Dart. Angular Dart. So now Dart can be uh, installed in two ways. You can either install the IntelliJ IDEA, uh, IntelliJ IDEA and install the Dart plugin and SDK, or there's another browser, web browser called Dartpad, which requires no download. You can just access it online. So you guys can go to dartpad.dev and you can open. I'll give you a minute and then we can just start off with the event. So it is dartpad.dev. You can uh, sh like share the split the screen and do it along with me. It will be a hands on session. So yeah. I am assuming that you guys have opened it. So let's dive into the session. Now uh, this is the basic syntax of Dart. So it starts with the void, which is generally the retire return type. And it also has main like every programming function has main function. So that is also known as the entry point and that is where the where your program or application starts executing. So when we use this void, that means it there is no that is the return type. So we are not just we are not returning anything. We're just printing stuff in that main method. So all you have to remember is that uh, main is the method or function and it is the data. I mean, it is the entry point of our application and whatever code is that is being written in the main method will get executed first. So let's go into Dartpad and we'll write our first uh, application or code here. So void is again the uh, Date return type and main is the first function. So to simple simply to print out a hello world, you would write print and you all know that uh, 
uh, hello okay uh, string is basically a collection of a uh, few characters so you would most likely put it in a parenthesis so in double in parenthesis you will put like double quote or single quote and then you could put the text of your choice here and you should always end it with a semicolon so this is with the um, this is console is where you would get the output and here generally uh, in the documentation it would suggest you some extra tips to improve your code or you can uh, find out any other suppose i don't in include the semicolon and i run it you guys can see here i have um, got the error that it is expected to find a semicolon so this is how you use it now we could run it and we've got the output as hello world. So similarly, we can include a lot other stuff like we could also perform multiplication and division. Suppose I want to ins I want to see into five. So you can see the output as 15. So this is how um, we are going to use dot uh, the console and this is the basic syntax. Moving on to comments in Dart. So comments are generally used so that we know what we are doing at that part of that part of the code. So here, whatever code is written, it's written in our main function and it is printed in the output console. But when we use comments, it is generally very helpful for the developers who are creating the code. It helps them understand the code button and there are two types of comments that which is the single line comment and multi line comments so single line uh, comment you can use it this way you can write uh, you can suppose you're mentioning uh, hello world so this is a single line comment we it, this will not be printed uh, in the output console, but it will be useful for the developers who are writing the code. You can see that as soon as I have commented this statement, it's not being printed in the output console. So that is the thing. Now I will show you how uh, to include multi line comments. So multi line comment is generally start with a forward slash and a star, and you can um, end it the same way. And you could like uh, generally include the code in this. You could write like um, output is e times five equal to fifteen. So this is how when you run it, you can just see the print statements being executed and not the comments. So it is generally advised to use the single line comment. That is this one. And uh, not multi line comments. It's just a gen. It is for use for purple personal purpose to understand the code better. Now, so now let's move on to uh, data types and variables. So the in this section we'll be basically uh, covering how to declare a vari variable. What are the various built in data types in Dart and also uh, strings and literals and also how to use uh, Keywords such as final and const. So you might be wondering what a data type is. A data type is uh, generally a certain amount of data or a variable that can store like an integer floating or character. So Dart supports the following data types. One is numbers and strings, which is generally generally a collection of characters. Boolean, which is either true or false. And uh, it also supports lists. Lists in other languages are known as arrays, but in Dart, both uh, arrays and lists are the same. But lists are generally like of a fixed length, so that's why they're known as arrays. And there are, we also use maps and sets. So now we'll be focusing on numbers, uh, numbers, booleans, and strings. And again, in number, there are two types of data. And in the number data types, there are again two types, uh, which is int and double. So Dart does not have uh, data types such as float or long or long, long int. All the data of the number type can be stored into int or double. So int uh, generally includes like whole numbers like 563, 441, whereas double can um, 
store values with decimal points up to how much of a precision we want to enter like 56.335 uh, in that way. So this is the thing and now I'll sh print. I'll show you how to declare a variable. So this is called declaring a variable. Now we saw there's some you want to in store your age in a. A certain place so you could do it through uh, a variable now here you can either uh, start by putting your data type which is int and a variable name so a uh, the variable name is uh, depends upon the user you can either put like my age or age or whatever you want to which is equal to value so the value 10 gets stored in this variable name age you can either initialize a variable this way or you could use this var age. So when you use the var age, the dot directly understands that you are trying to uh, store a. It recognizes 10 and it directly uh, understands that it is an integer value, so it interprets such that. So I'll be showing you a few examples of how to do it. Now suppose um, uh, we want to enter uh, your marks. So int marks is equal to 56. And you also want to include your suppose CGPA, which is equal to 9.56. Make sure to OK, sorry, which is a double, which is CGPA is 9.56. Make sure to end everything uh, with the semicolon. If you guys have any doubts, feel free to stop me in between. And we also have your end strings where we could like initiate we, we could store your name. And we also have like a uh, bool. Is we could initialize is he a student? You could just yes, put either put true or false. So now we have initialized all these variables. Now we can get the name. I mean we could get them as an output like print. You could either do it like ma. OK, sorry. You could do it by entering marks. So this what we have entered is uh, 56 and this is the output uh, that we've got that is print marks. So the same way if we make it. Um, EGPA. It will be 9.56. So this is the how you initialize and uh, print out variables. And another important thing to point out here is that all data types and dots are objects. So by default, they are always null values. So suppose now you haven't got your marks and I initialize it to be this. And when I do this. OK, I'm not sure why the error is coming. I'll. Uh, I'll fix it and I'll let you know guys know. So next we'll uh, jump into uh, strings, literals and string interpolation. So what are literals is basically when you initialize um, a variable, you'll be storing some amount of value in that. So the only information which is uh, yet to be stored in a variable and it's just written as a code. So suppose I initialize 678. So this is known as a literal. It is not yet stored in a variable and it is a it is like a standalone. It's just initialized here. So then the information like the literal could be of any format. It's all it can be of Boolean integer string or double. And they are like free values which are to be assigned to any data type and uh, which can be assigned to any data type variable in Dart. So then we have we now work, uh, I'll now show you how to work with strings. So suppose you have we initialize a string which is equal to first. And a string S2 which is equal to last. So now this is how you initialize uh, strings. Strings can be either done with a single uh, quote or a double quote. Both mean the same, but it is. It, in Dart, we basically have the flexibility to use both and both are like the 
correct way of representation. S2 is enclosed in single quotes and S1 is always enclosed in double quotes. And another st uh, statement I'll... So when you initialize something of this sort, Dart is confused basic and it is basically considering only the it part as a string that is enclosed it part which is enclosed in the single quotes as a string. It is not considering the whole thing. That's why you're getting. So even when we run it or try to print it, we'll be getting an error. So this can be uh, corrected in two ways so that the compiler understands. It can we can either use an escape character, which is just a backslash. Now it understands that OK, they want to include another single quote in between or it can be done by including double quotes. So here the usage of double quotes and single quote is there. So this won't throw an error but you would generally get confused doing it this way. So uh, pre the preferred method is by using a escape character. And another thing in uh, string is that. And there is a very long string. Suppose um, this is a long string. It's to be printed in. So uh, you can see that this string or this text is very long and it needs to be printed in two different two different uh, lines and it's not like a good practice for that to, for it to go out of the screen. So you can either fix this by two ways. You can either include a plus symbol, which is also known as string concatenation. It's basically like how you add two numbers using the plus symbol. You'd be adding two strings, but there's an easier way in Dart. So you can just you can just do this, which doesn't like. Which this is also a proper method, so Dart allows you to do this. It considers both the statements as a part of S4. So this is the thing about strings. And another thing you should know is string interpolation. So string interpolation can be. Uh, suppose I initialize a name called Alex and you want to print out your name so you can either do print. Uh, print my name is. My name is. And then you have to do a plus and then you have to do a name. This is one of the method. OK, so this is one of the method to do it, but then another simple method to uh, the, but this includes a lot of like plus and all that. So another simple method which Dart includes is called a uh, string interpolation. It basically how you do it is um, you can enclose the whole uh, text in the double quotes and just that before the variable name you have used here and you have to just add a dollar sign. So this basically. Um, you it it tells the compiler there's a variable being included and now it uh, pulls in the value of the value that is stored in this name variable and it executes this. So when we run this. We'll get it again as my name is Alex, so we could do a lot more stuff this way by int a is equal to two. And int b is equal to four. You could also add so now I can initialize another variable int add is equal to a plus b. This is one method equal to. Interpolation add so this is one of the method you could sum is equal to six. Another method you could do to print these is um, sum of A and B is you could use the same interpolation method. And when I do again, I could do it this way, but here you can see it is just being there for A. The interpolation is just will be just added to A, so I'll just get sum of A and B is two 
plus b or you might throw an error so by simply including them in a set of curly braces will give you the correct answer you don't need to like initialize another uh, variable again i'll yeah so by including all of them in uh, in double quotes you could get like sum of 2 and 4 is 6 so this is how you uh, uh, do in string interpolation. So here uh, this uh, dollar a plus b is considered as a regular expression when we put it in here. So that is how you do it. Now we could use something called as um, there is also something called as final and const. Now there are suppose keyboard keywords such as like um, constant value of const where like suppose the value of 5 is uh, pi is always 3.14 and it cannot be changed so such variables are uh, initialized using the const keyword so trying to change this values will basically throw you an error and using final keywords you can um, initialize variables which will never be which can never be changed suppose name is equal to again alex so now again you try to change suppose in like in another uh, variable name is equal to and you try to print name it'll throw you an error because you have again tried to uh, uh, what you have tried to change the value that is in name to Jimmy. So it'll, but the final is one which can never be changed. So this is all about strings and string interpolation. Yeah, we could, uh, we could definitely uh, replace uh, strings in uh, Dart. We, there is this method uh, called replace all, which can, yeah we could uh, use this method called replace all or uh, rewrite the same uh, or we could rewrite it using the same variable so next we'll move into uh, conditional statements so conditional statements are generally of two types we could either actually of three types we could either use if or if and else or if else if so I'll start off by showing you the basic explanation. So here we have initialized a, a variable called number of the int data type is which is equal to five. So now when we uh, put it, when we go to run the if state if else statement, now it here it is this number greater than zero is basically the condition. It is check the it wants you. you it is the compiler is checking if the number which has been initialized is greater than zero. So yes, if it is greater than zero, we could print. It will print the value is five or if it is not, then it will print the value is supposed for not, not five. That is what is happening here. And if the number is less than zero so here, the number is greater than zero true. So it will print. Uh, it will the if the code written in the if statement will get printed and here the thing is they are asking if number is less than zero if but here the number is five which is obviously not less than zero so the if part will be skipped and now it will jump to the else so everything in the else will get printed so i'll show you an example with the same so i suppose initialize my age is equal to 20 and now if I keep if age is greater than 21, I could put a statement like print. Uh, for example, adult. Print this. But I won't get any get any output here it's because my age is obviously not 20. My age is 20 and here I've given the condition that if my age is greater than 21, then you're supposed to print uh, uh, print that I'm an adult. So there, there is only one condition here which I obviously didn't satisfy. In this case, you could suppose in uh, initialize like two. You could give two conditions, which could be done with the else part. So now I could uh, 
do this and I could put teenage. So now my age is less than 21 and this condition doesn't get satisfied. And obviously, so it will jump to the else part. So here the print teenage, this one gets um, satisfied. So this is how I do it. Now you could do the same for like. Um, int number is equal to. 20. Now you want to check if the number is even or odd. So even numbers are divide are divisible by two. So when divided by two, their uh, their remainder is always zero. So here we use the modulo operator, which uh, spare, which gives us the remainder. So now when we do this, uh, so if this condition is satisfied, then we get even or we'll get odd. And suppose I'll change this to 23. Yeah, 23 is an odd number, so this is how we get odd. This is the if else statement. There is also if else if ladder when we could uh, include more than uh, two conditions and we and we could get our output based on that. Like if if is false, then we have an else if and else if is false, we'll have another else if and that is also false, we'll have the else part. So doing an example for the same. Suppose we have. Mm, marks equal to I've got suppose 75 marks and when my marks is greater than 80 my grade would be suppose A and else if now I could write another condition like if marks is greater than um, 60, my grade would be B. And I, I could enter another else if statement. Which I could do like else if statement. When marks is greater than 40, then my uh, grade would be C. And I could increase another else part. Where, uh, I don't need to give a condition for else because I have already if the if these conditions don't get satisfied, only then the statement is the line is the compiler is going to come to the else statement. If suppose I satisfy with this, then I obviously get um, my this print statement gets printed and the compiler will directly exit out of the main method. So here I could print. Um, B. So here my marks is greater than um, 60, so I'll obviously get a B grade. So this is how we use uh, if else if ladder. There is also another thing called um, switch switch case, which is similar to uh, if else, but it is can be used in the same way. So how we do switch is that we could Suppose initialize. OK, we already have initialized the int marks is equal to 75. So we could uh, start off by writing switch and the parameter which goes into this, which we are trying to find our greatest marks. So marks goes into this. And here we could start basically by giving cases like case. A. Sorry. Um, this. Um, Suppose 80, then your marks greater than 80. Then we could uh, print out again, print a uh, print a print 
and we'll also include something called break to break out of the statements because if when we don't include Okay, I'll just explain it in another uh, using another example. Suppose now we you want to find out uh, the remark for your remark for your grade, and now you have gotten a grade. So the switch statement where your grade is the input parameter. We could include different cases here. So when you have got a uh, as your grade, then you could uh, basically do print excellent, and we'll also include a keyword called break to break out of the statement. Because when we don't include the uh, break keyword, so it basically goes on to print every case available. I'll show you it in a bit. So I could include another uh, thing, another case where you have received the grade as B. So that time you will get a remark of example good. And there is something called default where in case the the user does not yeah, uh, enter uh, the correct grade. So that time I could put print. Enter a uh, valid grade. So here we could. Yeah, here we could include break. Yeah, so here the grade you've got is A, so you've got excellent. Suppose I don't include this break uh, statement and I run it again, I'll basically get an error. So this is the way you do it. You include break statement and you could also expand into it into more number of cases. So next we have uh, loops. The loops are generally uh, classified into entry control and exit control. Entry controlled is that here you would get the output only if the condition is satisfied and do where, whereas do while is not that way. You would get the output at least once, so it basically runs through the code and then it checks the condition. So I'll show you a for loop. So this is a for loop. So here first you will initialize a variable which is also known as the loop control variable. So this loop control variable basically keeps a track of how many times your loop would be running and the condition is this. This is the checking condition. Suppose you want to print uh, integers from 0 to 9. So you will initialize the variable i which is equal to 0 and you will want to print it till i is becomes less than 10. That is i is equal to 9. So when this i is becomes 10, it comes out of the loop. And whereas after this, everything is printed, there will be a slow increase. There will be an increment of this loop so that it can get gets to print every. Gets to print every variable, so we'll do the same. Suppose for int i is equal to 0. I less than 3. And I plus plus. You can what you can do is print. I. So in this way you will be able to print all the numbers less than I. That is uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. You could also take do another example of like how taking the sum. So I could start off this by initializing another variable sum is equal to zero. So now when I've initialized, I can put here sum is equal to sum. Plus I. So 
so here it how it works is we have initialized a variable called sum which is equal to zero and every time and, and then we have initialized then it comes to the for loop and then it uh, checks this i is equal to zero variable and then it checks the condition if i is equal to i is less than three which is true and then it goes into this now sum is equal to sum plus i here the value of sum is zero and the value of i is, is or i is also equal to zero you can see it here one minute yes yeah, so the value of i is equal to i is also equal to zero so in the sum first sum value is equal to zero then after printing the sum value is equal to zero then the i gets incremented here so again now when the sum value is zero the value of i would be equal to one so then it goes to print sum value again then you get one so if you don't want to print it in every step and just want to print it after a certain you could basically put it out of the for loop because in the for loop it would run every time i would be incrementing before i incrementing so here you've got the total sum is equal to three so this is how you do a for loop and then we also have the while loop so while loop is first it checks the condition and here the uh, loop control variable is initialized before the while loop it checks the condition and then it executes the work so it's writing the same thing in uh, uh, writing the same file program in using while loop it would be something of this sort so we have we are supposed to initialize the loop before uh, loop control variable before the while so now you want to you have to check if i is less than three and then if it in, if the value of i is three then it does sum is equal to sum plus i so this is how it works here so also now if you keep doing this it will just keep um you'll keep getting the output as zero there is something missing yeah so we have the uh increment value missing so now when we yeah so now we have got the output as three so this is how a while loop works it works the same way as a loop uh, for loop but we use for loop when we know a number of times it wants to run when we know the number of times it is going to run that is the difference between for loop and while loop so we generally use a for loop when we know the number of times uh, uh, loop should run and a while loop we generally use a while loop when we don't know the number of times the control loop is going to run so now we'll sh I'll show you what a uh, do while loop is. So this is a do while loop where similarly to while the loop control variable is initialized and then it executes the body. So it basically does the I plus plus and all that. Uh, it increment decrement statements. It executes the body and then it checks for the condition. That's why it is known as an exit controlled uh, that's why it is known as an exit control loop. So I'll. So yeah, again, we'll have int i is equal to zero and this thing. Suppose now here I initialize, I'll do, I'll change it a bit. So now if I, suppose I initialize here, sum is equal to five. So do print, suppose sum, I will print the value of sum only when while the condition if sum is greater than 10. So what do you guys think? I do you think I'll get the output I, or I'll not get the output? Yeah, so here I will still get the output because here the first the, the compiler is running the body and then it is checking the condition. So in spite of you giving, in spite of it satisfying or not satisfying the condition, in do while loop you could, you can, the body will be run at least once. So that is it for um, while and uh, while for and do while loop. Next is uh, excuse me. Yeah, I have a doubt. Yeah. Uh, don't we don't we write any program outside the main function? In that? Yeah, that is where uh, function comes in. 
so basically you i'll explain this is the thing so functions are something uh, where you write something outside the main function and then you call them from the main function for it to be executed so function uh, could be first this is the general uh, syntax of the function first we include the return type i'll show you examples where you can include and where you cannot do not include the return type then we have the function name which is totally depends upon the user they could initialize uh, whatever they want and these are known as the parameters so you could use like a uh, hundred parameters or a two parameters that totally depends upon you and now um, this is where you write the code so this is like a return value or you could use a print statement i'll show you so this is the one we'll be executing today so now i have this void main so i could uh, write another function to add like the sum of two integers for example or to find um, area of a okay wait, like area of square so now i could uh, write like int so generally we the area of square we generally we are considering it here it as a integer data type so now i could um, give any function name it totally depends upon me and also i could write int um, length so this is the parameter i'm passing here now here i could write whatever data i want to be included suppose uh, yeah so uh, we all know that area of square is nothing but uh, uh, length square so i could write length into length but when we run it here, we will not get an output here. That is because we haven't called this function. So the calling of this function generally happens in the main function. So you could either uh, just you could do it like area of five. So now we have called the function. If you if we run it, we still won't get the output because this needs this has this is int being printed so we could either initialize it suppose uh, int final is equal to area of five and we could print it in final we could print final i think we want to change the name final is also a keyword right okay yeah uh, some for example sorry uh, uh square yeah so that is area of the square is 25 so this is the way you do it when you have a return type now when we don't have a return type suppose we want to uh, find area of a uh, area of a uh, rectangle so when we don't want to give it a uh, give return type so we include the keyword void so i will i'll directly call it with two parameters 5 comma 6 now here we obviously need the lint and i will initialize here something called int breadth so now this value 5 will be stored in length and this value 6 will be stored in breadth so i'll Void and here I'll do some. I'll initialize the breadth. Oh, yeah. So generally, we use uh, print here. Oh, in this way when so how this works is the compiler starts uh, uh, entry point is main method so it starts working it starts compiling here and so when it comes here it will 
capture the values five and six. So the five will be stored in length and six will be stored in breadth. So now we can directly print it here using length into breadth, which would be 30. So this is you could directly print it here when we don't use a return type or if we use a return type, we could do it in the previous method that I showed. If you guys have any doubts, I can take them now. Or we'll move on to exception handling. No doubt. OK, so exception handling is um, you guys might have noticed that uh, many times our application crashes. So uh, suppose Android, you're using an Android application and it crashes when you are using it. This problem generally arises when the program which has been written to perform that application is being disrupted. So that's why you could uh, see like the application crashes. This that time there's an exception in our code or some bug in our code. So we generally handle this uh, with an exception so that when we are using the application, we are always like uh, it is always in a good flow and there are no uh, problems which arise when we give an invalid input. So there are generally uh, seven types of um, exceptions which occur. One is the deferred load expression. So this generally occurs when the library which was being used in the application fails to load. And we have the format exception when, uh, for example, a string or some other data type which we use does not have like a proper format or syntax. The syntax which was given for that uh, data type would have been wrong and we get integer division by zero exception, which will be generally there when we try to divide a number by zero. So we generally include another set of code, which happens when we divide by zero. We have the IO exception, which is uh, which rectifies or uh, which is the class for basically all the input output related exceptions. And then we have the isolate spawn one, which uh, isolates the uh, class which cannot be created. And like that, we have like timeout, which uh, gives like a scheduled timeout a result and all that. And we have many more such. So today I will be showing you a, one example of uh, in integer division by exception. So I'm, I'll be doing this in my VS code. Please, if, you're, if the screen isn't visible. So here, this one, when we try to uh, divide two integers, suppose 12 divided by four, it, so here you would be expecting uh, three as the value, but here it generally throws out a value val error because generally when we do it in other languages, 12 divided by four, you would get like uh, 3.0. So this is basically like a ex uh, which is a exception in the division operator, so, but simply by including the tilde operator, we could uh, get Yeah, so simply by including the tilde, you will get like the proper uh, integer division uh, which we expected. But when we try to divide it by uh, zero, it throws out an error again, which is the um, here you can see unhandled exception, which is the integer division by zero exception. So we could always uh, try and rectify this by using the try and catch keywords. So you could gen we generally put this set of code in try. So it enters into this try uh, curly bracket when the code we have written is like vulnerable, like or when it is it might throw an exception and which would generally lead to the crashing of the expression of the application. So that time it enters the try. Uh, 
So now here on completing, we have to complete it. So we have. Uh, we could also use another variable here, which the user would enter, but here I've taken example 12. So now here we will use the on keyboard on keyword. So here we've got the uh, exception uh, due to. Integer division by zero. And now here we can include suppose another statement. Uh, one minute. Yeah, so here we could include a statement like. Um, suppose can't. Cannot. Um, divide. Divide by zero. And this is. Yeah. So here you got an uh, output as cannot divide by zero. So or you could directly give it uh, as undefined. See here, uh, here we've got the output as undefined. So this is one of the example of. Um, it's this is one of the example when an exception through B2 is thrown. So there's another example where um, you don't know what the exception is. So there's another clause called catch clause, which tries to print out what is the exception here. So here we knew the we knew that the here we knew that the uh, error was integer division by zero. So we got an error. But in case we did not know that, then we could do like a catch E. So I say E because it like an error, or we could include the this in catch error. We could print out uh, the statement error in, and we could, as mentioned before, we could uh, use string interpolation to execute it. Yeah, see you see er, error in integer division by zero exception. So we use the catch clause, the try catch thing eh, when we don't know what our exception is. So this is the thing. In exception handling and next we have classes and objects. So classes are generally used when you want to generalize a few objects now suppose uh, let's consider that we are coming to offline classes so when we come to offline classes we are generally uh, differentiated based on our role numbers our names or the class we are in so i could now initiate another class so basically classes are like um what do you say it contains all the it contains the template to all the things. Suppose now in a student, they're looking for their role number and their name or which class they study in. Uh, so that is uh, that all those properties and behaviors can be defined in a class. So now I put another. Uh, I define a class. Called offline this. So now under this. I could uh, define like suppose int ID. So this int ID and all the now string name. So all these are being initialized and these are known as the instance variables, which I'll show it here. Yeah, so instance variables are basically the properties of a class which will be defined and every object of a particular class has its individual copy of installed variables. So now if. Uh, so now in all offline classes, you are generally recognized by your ID, your name and stuff, but it is not the same thing during your online classes. So it is generally you're generally recognized by your uh, team's account. You log in into so something of that sort. So every object of a particular class has like an individual copy of instance variables. And now these variables can be created with the object and also destroyed uh, when the object is not being used. So now I could uh, do something like. 
now string uh, initialize string uh, now suppose the students would perform two different activities either they would uh, listen to classes while in college where i would in generally include some set of code here and now or they would like um, void home they would go home after classes so i have initialized two functions in this now two functions in this where which comes under this class so basically students who are a part of the offline classes would either listen to the class or either go home that's what i've included so now i could initialize objects in the main keyword in the main method so here basically it is like taking information of various students now suppose i initialize variable student 1 and call the function offline classes so here i am basically initializing that this student sorry this student 1 is a part of the online classes so when a student is a part of the online classes so they'll have a suppose they'll have a certain id this is how you initialize their id suppose it is 19061 this is their id and their student sorry std and the student name is equal to alex so these are the properties of student 1 which have been initialized so also this uh, student 1 or this std 1 can be known as reference variables so reference variables are they generally point out to a memory storage allocated for the particular object created so this thing is one object and the reference variable which is pointing out to that object is std1 and reference variables are like the identifiers of the declared object so when i've declared this object i can uh, this is the reference variable std1 is the reference variable uh, which is who is pointing out to that so now i can suppose print out the details of student 1 which i could use by doing string interpolation e1 dot id and a uh, string interpolation std1 dot name okay so the error was that um, i've told you that everything in dart is basically objects so their uh, uh, default value would be none so here when it is uh, calling the offline classes here i have not initiated anything so it was giving an error that it would be it is a null so i have initiated this but when we come here it overrides this uh, null value of minus 1 and sam so we have just by default given it as minus 1 and sam but there is no such student exists but these are like the actual student credentials that we have entered so this is what it does now here in void class i can in enter some details like print i would now use something called uh, this so this is a keyword this dot name so this is a keyword which is generally used to access the variables put in a certain thing so here i could uh, it will be accessed when i call out these functions uh, listen and home so when it is called out from this std1 it looks in for this name so here name will be alex so now i could suppose include it like is listening to classes and when i call the function like std1 dot listen and
Yeah, so I this is how you do it. Now here after I've initial after I've written this line of code, the std one dot listen, all the values or all the variables that are initialized in this uh, std dot one would be pulled into this function. So when I use this dot name, it will uh, what do you say access the name in uh, name initialized in std.1 and that's why we got this output. So similarly, we could uh, do it for another student also. And this is all about uh, classes and objects. And then we have something called arrays. So as mentioned before, arrays are nothing but a list of fixed length. Now let's under list that be something of and under arrays, there's generally of like three types. There are lists, set, and uh, maps. So in this one, we'd be covering about a uh, list. And also in list, there are like two types. One is a fixed length list and a growable list. So as an arrays, when you um, pre-input the index size, which will be uh, similar to the fixed length list, and uh, the growable list is when you could when you don't give enough, when you don't give the index size and you let the user enter how many ever variables they want to. So how do we, if the list is generally initialized in this way. In here, we put the, we put the data type of the integers that we're going to put into the list. And suppose we give it as numbers is equal to list of, Five. So this is a fixed length list. OK, so this is a fixed length list, so it can take in only five numbers into this. So now how do we put into the put in the numbers in this? So it is numbers. So numbers and we generally uh, it is in the form of an index like arrays. So in suppose the index index always starts from zero. So here uh, it that it can take in five numbers. So index starts from zero and goes up to four. Like it is always n minus one. So here now we can suppose initialize seven eighty nine and I can do the same for all others. Yeah, so this is how you push in the elements into the list. And now suppose you want to print all these elements. We use something called a foreign loop. So we basically use int elements. That is we are initializing another uh, variable called int elements, which accesses all which access all the numbers in the list. So so here it is basically doing in L int elements in this list in number would be print elements. OK, we are supposed to use the uh, keyword new, which basically uh, initializes the new list. I think we should use the square brackets. Uh, for it is okay. I'm not sure where the error is. I'll uh, work on that and get back to you guys. So this is how you initialize this. So basically. Uh, it is like an array, but with a f what we are doing here is like of a fixed length. It stores in values of dif different uh, indexes starting from zero to n minus one. That is what happens in a uh, fixed length list. But yeah, so there is another thing called a global list, which does not like uh, give any which where we do not need no need to specify 
uh, specified the digits here. So we could just uh, run it and we it will just print stuff in the same way. So that is it about a list and fix length list and global list. And then we have a uh, set and hash map. So basically set is an unordered collection collection of unique items. You cannot it does not contain any duplicate items, so everything can be uh, initialized or stored only once. And since and these elements are do not go order by the order index, whereas in lists everything would go in order of index. Here everything would be randomly put in and hash set is nothing but the implementation of unordered set. So it is based upon this hash table and it puts in their values randomly. So how you um, do is now set and here we generally initialize the data type of the set. Now again we do numbers to set. So this is how we initialize a set and now you could add numbers using uh, numbers. Dot add. 45. And numbers dot. Add. 23. So this is how you add. Now you could also remove um, numbers in. Let now how you could access in all of this is by using uh, again by using for loop, but just that here the difference uh, when compared to list is that it does not have um, a sequence. It is randomly put. Yeah, so these are the elements which are which have been stored and set. So now this for loop int this um, loop control this variable is accessing all the numbers in set and it is adding this. So there are many functions again which you could perform with um, sets. One of it is uh, add. So that is how you add elements into the thing. You could also do something like numbers dot remove and we want to remove 45. So when we try to run the loop again, you get only 23. And now suppose I'm adding uh, numbers dot add. Here we can we are getting only 23 ones. That's because sets does not take in uh, um, duplicate elements. So even if I initialize this 100 times, it would just consider that there is 123 because it takes in only. Um, it's like a unique uh, collection of unique items. So even if uh, you replicate the same numbers again and again, it is just going to discard it. And now suppose I change this to three and there's another thing called numbers. Dot length. When we try to when we do this, it will basically show you the length of the number of the elements that is present in here. And we have another function called uh, numbers. Dot clear uh, which which clears all the elements present in that set see now that's why you haven't got any um, output here so this is all about uh, set and hash set now the last concept of this session is maps and hash maps so hash maps is basically um, another unordered collection, but it is generally in the form of key value pair. So like in a dictionary where a certain word would have a certain meaning, you could initialize a 
map and hash map of the same way. So now everything here is in the form of key value pair. So here the key uh, present in everything should be unique, whereas the value of it could be repeated. Uh, we'll see the same with another example. So how uh, in to initialize a map, you could write map and here you need to give in two parameters. One is for the string and one is for the um, value. So suppose I have string comma int. And I could say student equal to and here I have to put in values of both uh, string of both uh, the user, the key and the value. So suppose I initialize Alex. Um, his role number is suppose one and I initialize uh, Sam whose value is two. With, OK, you have to put commas after everything. So this is how you initialize um, a map. Another example with map I could show is that map. Suppose I am trying to uh, segregate between a boy, segregate between male and female. So then I could do like gender is equal to map of and map, which is not defined yet. So now I could add in values like um, gender of suppose Alex to male. Of uh, Alex of Siri is equal to female. So what I meant by you could repeat the key, but not the value is here. I can't assign to add. So this is these. This is basically the key and this is the value of it. So now I can't assign both male and female to Alex. So I could either assign. Um, I could either assign. Male or female, but I could assign the same male value to someone else. Suppose gender is male. So this is the rule about uh, maps. That is the key. That is the key in the map should be unique. That is Alex, Siri and Sam, whereas the value of them can be repeated. So again, I can. Uh, uh, initialize another for loop of string value. dot keys. So it will now it will print. The. OK, we should also close the hash map. This is how you initialize it. Yeah, so the keys are basically Alex, Sam and Siri, but when we do that to values. Now we'll get an output of male, female, male. So this is how you do it. Now suppose you want to update that. Uh, you want to update that Sam is actually a female. You have entered uh, the name wrong. Then you could do it using gender dot update. Of Sam, so you want to update her value which you have entered wrong to female when we do this on oh, excuse me So when we do this, now we will get the output as male, female, female. 